The dissolution of the Soviet Union was formally enacted on December 26, 1991, as a result of the Declaration No. 142 of the Soviet of the Republics of the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union, acknowledging the independence of the former Soviet Republics and creating the Commonwealth of Independent States. Although five of the signatories ratified it much later or not at all, on the previous day, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev, the eighth and last leader of the Soviet Union, resigned, declared his office extinct, and handed over its powers, including control of the Soviet nuclear missile launching codes, to Russian President Boris Yeltsin. That evening at 7.32 p.m., the Soviet flag was lowered from the Kremlin for the last time and replaced with the pre-revolutionary Russian flag. Previously, from August to December, all the individual republics, including Russia itself, had seceded from the Union. The week before the Union's formal dissolution, 11 republics, all except the Baltic states and Georgia, signed the Almorata Protocol formally establishing the CIS and declaring that the Soviet Union had ceased to exist. The dissolution of the USSR also signaled the end of the Cold War. The revolutions of 1989 and the end of the Soviet Union led to the end of decades-long hostility between North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the Warsaw Pact. The defining feature of the Cold War, several of the former Soviet republics have retained close links with the Russian Federation and formed multilateral organizations such as the Eurasian Economic Community, the Union State, the Eurasian Customs Union and the Eurasian Economic Union to enhance economic and security cooperation. Some have joined NATO and the European Union or aspire to do so, to enhance their military and economic independence from Russia. 1985 Moscow. Mikhail Gorbachev New General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev was elected General Secretary by the Politburo on March 11, 1985, three hours after predecessor Konstantin Chernenko's death at age 74. Gorbachev, aged 54, was the youngest member of the Politburo. His initial goal as General Secretary was to revive the Soviet economy, and he realized that doing so would require reforming underlying political and social structures. The reforms began with personnel changes of senior Brezhnev era officials who would impede political and economic change. On April 23, 1985, Gorbachev brought two protégés, Yegor Ligachev and Nikolai Ryzhkov, into the Politburo as full members. He kept the power ministries happy by promoting KGB head Viktor Chebrikov from candidate to full member and appointing Minister of Defense Marshal Sergei Sokolov as a Politburo candidate. This liberalization, however, fostered nationalist movements and ethnic disputes within the Soviet Union. It also led indirectly to the revolutions of 1989, in which Soviet-imposed communist regimes of the Warsaw Pact were peacefully toppled, which in turn increased pressure on Gorbachev to introduce greater democracy and autonomy for the Soviet Union's constituent republics. Under Gorbachev's leadership, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1989 introduced limited competitive elections to a new central legislature, the Congress of People's Deputies. In May 1985, Gorbachev delivered a speech in Leningrad advocating reforms and an anti-alcohol campaign to tackle widespread alcoholism. The prices of vodka, wine, and beer were raised, and sales restricted. It was a serious blow to the state budget, a loss of approximately 100 billion rubles according to Alexander Yakovlev, and much alcohol production migrated to the black market. The purpose of these reforms, however, was to prop up the existing centrally planned economy, unlike later reforms. 
which tended toward Marquette socialism. On July 1, 1985, Gorbachev promoted Eduard Shevardnadze, first secretary of the Georgian Communist Party, to full member of the Politburo, and the following day appointed him Minister of Foreign Affairs, replacing longtime Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko. The latter, disparaged as Mr. Nyet in the West, had served for 28 years as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Gromyko was relegated to the largely ceremonial position of chairman of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet, as he was considered an old thinker. Also on July 1, Gorbachev took the opportunity to dispose of his main rival by removing Grigory Romanov from the Politburo, and brought Boris Yeltsin and Lev Zhikov into the CPSU Central Committee Secretariat. In the fall of 1985, Gorbachev continued to bring younger and more energetic men into government. On September 27, Nikolai Ryzhkov replaced 79-year-old Nikolai Tikhonov as chairman of the Council of Ministers, effectively the Soviet Prime Minister, and on October 14, Nikolai Tolyza replaced Nikolai Bybakov as chairman of the State Planning Committee. At the next Central Committee meeting on October 15, Tikhonov retired from the Politburo and Tolyza became a candidate. Finally, on December 23, 1985, Gorbachev appointed Yeltsin first secretary of the Moscow Communist Party replacing Viktor Grishin. 1986, Sakharov Gorbachev continued to press for greater liberalization. On December 23, 1986, the most prominent Soviet dissident, Andrei Sakharov, returned to Moscow shortly after receiving a personal telephone call from Gorbachev telling him that after almost seven years his internal exile for defying the authorities was over. Baltic Republics The Baltic Republics, forcibly reincorporated into the Soviet Union in 1944, pressed for independence beginning with Estonia in November 1988 when the Estonian legislature passed laws resisting the control of the central government. Latvia's Helsinki 86 The CTAG Helsinki 86 was founded in July 1986 in the Latvian port town of Liepaja by three workers, Linnard Scrantons, Ryman Spitinjex, and Martins Boris. Its name refers to the human rights statements of the Helsinki Accords. Helsinki 86 was the first openly anti-communist organization in the USSR, and the first openly organized opposition to the Soviet regime, setting an example for other ethnic minorities pro-independence movements. On December 26, 1986, in the early morning hours after a rock concert, 300 working-class Latvian youths gathered in Riga's Cathedral Square and marched down Lenin Avenue toward the Freedom Monument, shouting, Soviet Russia out! Free Latvia! Security forces confronted the marches, and several police vehicles were overturned. Central Asia Kazakhstan, Jeltokzan riots The Jeltokzan of 1986 were riots in Alma-Ata, Kazakhstan, sparked by Gorbachev's dismissal of Din Muhammad Konayev, the first secretary of the Communist Party of Kazakhstan and an ethnic Kazakh, who was replaced with Gennady Kolbin, an outsider from the Russian SFSR. Demonstrations started in the morning of December 17, 1986 with 200 to 300 students in front of the Central Committee building on Brezhnev Square protesting Konayev's dismissal and replacement by a Russian. Protesters swelled to 1,000 to 5,000 as other students joined the crowd. The CPK Central Committee ordered troops from the Ministry of Internal Affairs, Druzhiniki, cadets, policemen, and the KGB to cordon the square and videotape the participants. The situation escalated around 5 p.m. as troops were ordered to disperse the protesters. Clashes between the security forces and the demonstrators continued throughout the night in Almaty. On the next day, December 18, protests turned into civil unrest as clashes between troops, volunteers, militia units, and Kazakh students turned into a wide-scale confrontation. The clashes could only be controlled on the third day. 
The El Marti events were followed by smaller protests and demonstrations in Shymkent, Pavlodar, Karaganda, and Taldykorgan. Reports from Kazakh SSR authorities estimated that the riots drew 3,000 people. Other estimates are of at least 30,000 to 40,000 protesters with 5,000 arrested and jailed, and an unknown number of casualties. Jelto Kzan leaders say over 60,000 Kazakhs participated in the protests. According to the Kazakh SSR government, there were two deaths during the riots, including a volunteer police worker and a student. Both of them had died due to blows to the head. About 100 others were detained and several others were sentenced to terms in labor camps. Sources cited by the Library of Congress claimed that at least 200 people died or were summarily executed soon thereafter, some accounts estimate casualties at more than 1,000. The writer Mukhtar Shikhanov claimed that a KGB officer testified that 168 protesters were killed, but that figure remains unconfirmed. 1987, Moscow, One Party Democracy at the January 28-30, 1987, Central Committee Plenum. Gorbachev suggested a new policy of democratization throughout Soviet society. He proposed that future Communist Party elections should offer a choice between multiple candidates, elected by secret ballot. However, the CPSU delegates at the plenum watered down Gorbachev's proposal, and democratic choice within the Communist Party was never significantly implemented. Gorbachev also radically expanded the scope of Glasnost, stating that no subject was off-limits for open discussion in the media. Even so, the cautious Soviet intelligentsia took almost a year to begin pushing the boundaries to see if he meant what he said. For the first time, the Communist Party leader had appealed over the heads of Central Committee members for the people's support in exchange for expansion of liberties. The tactic proved successful. Within two years political reform could no longer be sidetracked by party, conservatives, an unintended consequence was that having saved reform, Gorbachev's move ultimately killed the very system it was designed to save. On February 7, 1987, dozens of political prisoners were freed in the first group released since Khrushchev's thaw in the mid-1950s. On May 6, 1987, Pamyat, a Russian nationalist group, held an unsanctioned demonstration in Moscow. The authorities did not break up the demonstration and even kept traffic out of the demonstrators' way while they marched to an impromptu meeting, with Boris Yeltsin, head of the Moscow Communist Party and at the time one of Gorbachev's closest allies. On July 25, 1987, 300 Crimean Tatars staged a noisy demonstration near the Kremlin Wall for several hours, calling for the right to return to their homeland, from which they were deported in 1944. Police and soldiers merely looked on. On September 10, 1987, after a lecture from hardliner Yegor Ligachev at the Politburo for allowing these two unsanctioned demonstrations in Moscow, Boris Yeltsin wrote a letter of resignation to Gorbachev, who had been holidaying on the Black Sea. Gorbachev was stunned, no one had ever voluntarily resigned from the Politburo. At the October 27, 1987, plenary meeting of the Central Committee, Yeltsin, frustrated that Gorbachev had not addressed any of the issues outlined in his resignation letter, criticized the slow pace of reform, servility to the General Secretary, and opposition from Ligachev that had led to his resignation. No one had ever addressed the party leader so brazenly in front of the Central Committee since Leon Trotsky in the 19th 1920s. In his reply, Gorbachev accused Yeltsin of political immaturity and absolute irresponsibility. No one backed Yeltsin. Nevertheless, news of Yeltsin's insubordination and secret speech spread, and soon some misdirect versions began to circulate. 
This marked the beginning of Yeltsin's rebranding as a rebel and rise in popularity as an anti-establishment figure. The following four years of political struggle between Yeltsin and Gorbachev played a large role in the dissolution of the USSR. On November 11, 1987, Yeltsin was fired from the post of first secretary of the Moscow Communist Party, Baltic Republics. Molotov-Ribbentrop protests on August 23, 1987, on the 48th anniversary of the secret protocols of the 1939 Molotov Pact between Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin that ultimately turned the then-independent Baltic states over to the Soviet Union. Thousands of demonstrators marked the occasion in the three Baltic capitals to sing independence songs and listen to speeches commemorating Stalin's victims. The gatherings were sharply denounced in the official press and closely watched by the police, but were not interrupted. Latvia leads on June 14, 1987, about 5,000 people gathered again at Freedom Monument in Riga, and laid flowers to commemorate the anniversary of Stalin's mass deportation of Latvians in 1941. This was the first large demonstration in the Baltic republics to commemorate the anniversary of an event contrary to official Soviet history. The authorities did not crack down on demonstrators, which encouraged more and larger demonstrations throughout the Baltic states. The next major anniversary after the August 23 Molotov Pact demonstration was on November 18, the date of Latvia's independence in 1918. On November 18, 1987, hundreds of police and civilian militiamen cordoned off the central square to prevent any demonstration at Freedom Monument, but thousands lined the streets of Riga in silent protests regardless. Estonia's first protests in spring 1987, a protest movement arose against new phosphate mines in Estonia. Signatures were collected in Tartu, and students assembled in the university's main hall to express lack of confidence in the government. At a demonstration on May 1, 1987, young people showed up with banners and slogans despite an official ban. On August 15, 1987, former political prisoners formed the MRPAEG group, which was headed by TIIT Madison. In September 1987, the Edisee newspaper published a proposal by Edgar Savasar, SIIM Callis, TIIT made and Miktitma calling for Estonia's transition to autonomy, initially geared toward economic independence, then toward a certain amount of political autonomy, the project. Eismahande Vesti became known according to its Estonian acronym, IME, which means, miracle. On October 21, a demonstration dedicated to those who gave their lives in the 1918-1920 Estonian War of Independence took place in Voru, which culminated in a conflict with the militia. For the first time in years, the blue, black and white national tricolour was publicly displayed. The Caucasus Armenia, Environmental Concerns in Nagorno-Karabakh on October 17, 1987. About 3,000 Armenians demonstrated in Yerevan complaining about the condition of Lake Seven, the Nerit chemicals plant, and the Metsemor nuclear power plant, and air pollution in Yerevan. Police tried to prevent the protests but took no action to stop it once the march was underway. The demonstration was led by Armenian writers such as Silva Karputikian, Zori Balayan, and Maro Margarian and leaders from the National Survival Organization. The march originated at the Opera Plaza after speakers, mainly intellectuals, addressed the crowd. The following day 1,000 Armenians participated in another demonstration calling for Armenian national rights in Karabakh. The demonstrators demanded the annexation of Nakhchivan and Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia, and carried placards to that effect. The police tried to physically prevent the march and after a few incidents, dispersed the demonstrators. Nagorno-Karabakh would break out in violence the following year.